Hi everyone. We're talking about vulnerability and how to know how much to share and maybe who to share with. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last video we talked about you know how not to be a victim. Um, so now the question is how much do you share and to whom? Yes. Um, I mean I, I tend to overshare responsibly. I overshare <laughs> responsibly. Could you define that please? Um, which means I, I check in with people but mm -hmm. I don't hide stuff. Yes. Um, so I'm kind of in that hi, this is me being vulnerable. If that scares you away, totally cool. Because you know what? I'm never going to stop being vulnerable with you. Yeah. And, and really, for me, vulnerability is about when I notice things that I'm afraid to share. That's usually, for me, my cue that I might want to be sharing that. So it's a sign that you might be holding something back or yeah. hiding it. No, that's not. That does not mean that I'm uh, doing that with the checkout person at the grocery <laughs> store. These are with people that are that are somehow in my life in some sort of meaningful way, or whom I'm building a relationship that's yeah. that's meaningful. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that everybody needs to know that I grew up in an alcoholic, you know, with an alcoholic mom and a father who, you know, had some trouble telling the truth. You just told everybody though. I hope that was okay. <laughs> I feel very vulnerable. Um, but what it does mean is that if you're of any significance, mm -hmm. I'm not going to hide stuff like that. Yeah. Um, or if you're just a decent person and we're connecting, there's not a lot of reason for me to hide that stuff if we're having a conversation where that is appropriate. Right. Where that is within context, not me just like blurting out, hey, guess what? Yeah. Um, although that can be a great way to to further conversation. Like, mm -hmm. hey, guess what? Like, I'm feeling, you know, I'm enjoying this conversation. I'm going to be a little bit more vulnerable because I'm curious about what was your family like? My family was an alcoholic mom and a father who yeah. lied because of their marriage issues. Right. Like, I can be vulnerable about that. Mm -hmm. And some people are like, oh, my God, I can't believe you just said that. Yeah. But I'm role modeling for the people around me that it's okay for you to be vulnerable back. Because personally, for me, I hate small talk. Yeah. I don't like talking about the weather. Now, for those of you who like talking about the weather, that's okay. Um, but for me, you know, if I'm enjoying somebody's company mm -hmm. i'm interested in what's deeper yes. to talk about because i'm a communication dork your mileage is going to vary on this so it it starts to come down to this idea of is it anybody's business because vulnerable and being transparent doesn't mean you just blurt out everything yeah. to everybody in the context of the conversation we're having mm -hmm. is this useful information is it furthering the conversation yeah. um and is it any of your business right in that way of like if we're just meeting you probably don't want to know what my bathroom habits are <laughs> it's none of your business mm -hmm. because in in this way that like you're like i don't want to know it's none of my business <laughs> so that kind of approach is how i think of it yes. you know um and it's always in service of fostering more communication mm -hmm. and more intimacy. And intimacy doesn't have to be romantic, you know, sexual. It's right. just like Connection. connected yeah. vulnerability. And one of the biggest things, I used to always try to protect everyone from my story. I was so afraid that anything about the abuse or anything traumatic at all would, would disturb people and cause distress. And if, you taught me, actually, ask them. Hmm? So you can just say to them, hey, um, we're starting to get to know each other. I, I would like to deepen our connection. There's some things about me that were kind of tough when I was little, mm -hmm. and they, kind of, they did influence who I am. They made a difference in who I am, and I'd love to share them with you. How do you feel about that? Yeah, and that's really great context setting for somebody to be like, all right, that sounds really heavy. I'm not in that mood. And then you're like, awesome. Thank you so much for taking care of yourself. Yeah. Because you just modeled that you're willing to be vulnerable. Yes. And then you respected their boundaries by checking in. And when they said no, you didn't tell them the rest of the story. Right. Don't and be that person who's like, hey, do you mind if I tell you, you know, this deep thing about myself? And they're like, no, thank you. And you're like, well, my mother and father, blah, blah. <laughs> Don't be that person. 
And if they do say yes, then you can trust. You can be more relaxed when you tell them because they've already agreed. Mm. They're there because they chose to be. And they're listening because they know that there's something coming and they're ready to be there for mm. you. So I'm Kathy Vartilli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. And this is Reed Mahalka from ReadAboutSex.com. And we hope that you get to go out there and be more vulnerable and be more intimate. Awesome. Let us know what you think about these podcasts or video class or whatever we're calling, whatever the kids are calling <laughs> these days. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Mm-hmm.